Welcome! In this series of videos, we will look at software add-ons for the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today, we will look at SQL Tools, an add-on from Perfect Sync Software, and running SQL queries to populate combo boxes. We're going to be adding a new generic function to allow easy population of combo boxes directly from a database query. To allow us to create this new generic function, I've created a skeleton of a PowerBasic Windows application containing two combo boxes, two buttons, and a label, which we'll use to display any statuses. The combo boxes at the moment are just filled with sample data, but if we have a look at the code, we'll see what it actually does. In our PB main, we have, as we did in the last video, redimensioned our database's global array to contain the name of the two SQL Server databases we are going to be pulling data out of. We then run the SQL Authorize to confirm our license for SQL tools. We run the standard SQL initialization to prepare the library for use. And at that point, we would show the window our dialogue with the two combo boxes and the two buttons. After we have completed and exited from the dialogue, both databases can then be closed down. This can either be done individually and then do a SQL shutdown, or since we're exiting completely, the SQL shutdown would itself close all open databases and close down the access to SQL tools. We're including the SQL tools libraries as a PBLib file. Now, if we have a look at the dialog itself, the dialog itself is fairly standard, and there are two calls to the sample combo box function, which we're going to comment out, which we're populating it with sample data. If we have a look in the event handler, the callback function of the dialog, this is where we're going to be putting our code. Now in the initialize section of the callbacks, I have already put in what we had in our previous video. A connection string to the SQL Server database using a trusted connection and naming the database to be used. The database is then opened using our generic function. I'm putting a message out to the status label for the status that gets returned. We're then attempting to connect to the second database, the YouTube projects database, and calling the same generic function and displaying its status message. And at this point we have the SQL. In the previous video we created a generic SQL data function to populate an array with all the data we wish to get back from the database. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to populate the combo boxes with that information. Now we could take the approach we've taken here, first of all populate the array and then step through each element in the array and do a combo box add command to add the details onto the combo box. However, when you're dealing with databases and dialogues, you may be spending a lot of time populating combo boxes either initially when the dialogue loads or interactively when the user picks something from the dialogue. So you can then populate an underlying dialogue which is based on the data selected from the first dialogue. So as we're going to be spending quite a lot of time picking information in and out of dialogues, we need a nice easy way of actually doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to comment this section of code out because we won't be needing this. What we're going to do in here is we're going to put a common function in which will populate the combo box for us. Now what we're going to do first of all, we're going to replace this piece of SQL with another piece of SQL. And what this SQL is going to be doing, it's going to be selecting two columns from our database table. One being the food type, which in this case is a simple string, 
and the second column will be an integer from SQL which we'll treat as a long and this will be the primary key for that record in the database. Now what we want to do is we want to prepare our generic function and we'll call this populate generic combo from db. We're going to have to pass some parameters to this generic function so it knows what it needs to do. The first parameter we'll pass is the handle of the dialog on which the combo box is going to be stored. The second parameter will be the handle of the dialog itself. The third parameter will be the SQL we wish the common function to actually execute. The fourth parameter at the moment I'll leave blank. What I'd like the function to do is not only populate the combo box but do a default selection of one of the items on the combo box. So we'll leave this blank for the moment and we'll come back to this one. The next parameter will be the handle of the database we wish to connect to. In this case the food DB. And we'll also want to get back from the function a status. Just in case for some reason our SQL doesn't work and we cannot connect to the database and get back the data we actually want. Our final parameter, which we will make an optional parameter, is going to be the statement number we want the query to actually use. Because depending on our program, the first statement, second, third, fourth may have already been used. So with this one line of code, one call to the new function, it should populate the combo box we want. So let's go and create that in our common functions library. So we're going to create a new function to perform this act. So our first variable is going to be the dialog handle, which will be a D word. And then we will take in the handle to the combo box. And then our SQL string. And this next parameter will be our selection to allow us to automatically select a value on the combo box. The next variable is our database handle. And then our status. And then finally an optional parameter. Which in this case is going to be a along which will be our statement number. So what we'll need to do here is we will need to prepare an array which will hold the data we're getting back from the query. And since our optional parameter is going to be sometimes there, sometimes not, we'll do exactly the same as we did in the previous video by testing to see if the parameter is missing or not missing. And we'll use our new variable along s to have the value. If it isn't present, we'll default to number one. Now, having got all those variables, we'll then want to call the routine we have down here, the get generic SQL data. And it's taking a number of parameters. First of all, the SQL. The array. The database handle.
the status. And finally, our optional parameter for the selection of this statement. Now, if this routine fails to get anything back from the database, in other words, if the get generic SQL data function returns false, first thing we want to do is we will reset the combo box to clear the information that's in it completely using the combo box reset command. And we'll set the function to false. Now all we have to do, having got the array data back, we want to populate the combo box. As populating combo box from an array is something you might do on a regular basis, probably creating another common function to do this would be a good idea. So we'll create a second common function called populate generic combo. This function is going to take a number of parameters, the dialog handle, the combo box handle, the array, we're going to be passing it, and the selection. Now all we have to do is to create the second function, whose single task is to populate the combo box. So as we did before, we'll just declare these. Having this in two functions allows you to actually populate a combo box that does not have to come from the database and is coming from some other array. So this makes it even more usable. Now the reason for passing the second parameter, being the long, is that having the value of the index of the record you're actually giving to the application stored within the combo box means that when the user selects a value from the combo box, you can very easily pull back the index, the primary key of the item in the database, making it very easy to update. So we're going to create a couple of local variables here. Now, the first thing to do, since we're going to be populating a combo box, is to clear the combo box out. So we do a simple combo reset, as we did up above, which will empty all the data out of the combo box. And now all we need is a for next loop. Now we're going from one to the upper bounding of the string array, which will give us every record that's in that array. So we're going to use the combo box add command. Passing the handle for the dialog and the combo. And we want to give it here the string we wish to appear in the drop down box, which the user can see. Now we know that our array is referenced by the long r variable, which is going to contain the string and the long pipe delimited. And we can use the parse command to slice up that quite nicely as the first element of that string is going to be the value we want in the combo box. And we're going to pass back the item number that's added to the combo box into our data v variable. The reason for that is depending how you set your combo boxes up, if the combo box is set sorted when you add an item onto a combo box, if it's set as a sorted combo box, then it will resort. So although you added it as the fourth element onto the combo box, it may not be that once it's been sorted. So we'll pull back the value it did turn out to be after being added. Allowing us to set the long user value. And again, we need to give it details of the dialog and the combo box itself. We'll be passing it the handle 
to the item number and again we want to parse this information and we're looking for the second element this time now as this is going to be a number we need to use the val command to turn the value in that string into a number now that will effectively populate the combo box with all the values however we did pass an str selection variable which may contain a value and if this does contain a value then we want to pre-select the item on the combo box we can use a combo box find using the exact option and again we'll need the two handles for the dialog and the combo box we're starting from the first element of the combo box we're looking specifically for the value in str selection and we're putting the value we find into long data v and then we can use the other combo box option to pre-select it and again the two handles need to be given again and then the final value is which item to select as this library is used by both PowerBasic Windows and PowerBasic Console these commands would not compile under the console compiler so what we'll need to do is we'll need to put a conditional compilation option in before they appear so that when you're compiling under the console compiler it will not attempt to include these so all we need to do at the beginning is to put a hash if command in and what this is doing is it's checking to see if this particular constant pb132 is actually defined or not and only if it is defined if we are using the windows compiler will this be compiled into your code and after we've actually handled that we can put an end if. Note that in this particular end if there is no space between end and if. So let's just save that and we'll test first of all if it compiles cleanly. Ah, need to put it into the library and that is indeed compiling quite cleanly. So let's just double check our code we look down where we put a code in this is the SQL we're actually selecting looking for two columns we're putting it into this particular comma box so the first comma box should be populated so let's run that and see what we get there's a dialog on the screen and there's a comma box with the four items on it now just to prove this has actually worked correctly what I want to do is I want to put some code into this button here that will pick up the values that have been stored and selected on the combo box. So let's have a look at the code further down. There are our event handlers for our button. What we want to do in here is to work out what's been selected. Now in this particular combo box, this is a single item selection combo box, which makes it easier. You kind of do, of course, do the same thing with a multi-select one. But what we're going to do here is a combo box get select using the handle of the dialog which we know we'll want to put in the combo box we're trying to interrogate which is this one and we'll want to take that value and we'll want to put it into a variable so we'll create a new variable called long item we need to declare that one which we'll do in a moment we can then having got that item this tells us the number the ordinal number of the item on the combo box we can then use the get text to get the text on that ordinal number and again we give it the combo box handle we give it the item number we previously got and we're putting that to get another variable which we'll need to create in a moment called str temp 
and I'll do almost the same thing to get the user value which is the long number we've embedded in the combo box and we'll store that in a numeric variable called long temp so we'll create these three variables up here at the top of our code first one being a long second one being a string and the final one being a long now having got all that we'll then want to put that information out somewhere we can see it now we've created a label at the bottom of our dialog which we can put data into so we'll do a control set on that one I'll put in the handle of the status box itself and we want to put in str temp which is the string that the user selected and we'll do a cabbage return line feed in that one so what we're going to have after this is a, a line feed and then the number This will be a long temp. So once we click on that number one button, we should get the information the user has selected back from the combo box, and we should get the handle. So let's try running that now. Right, there is our list. We'll pick packets from the list, hit the button, and it pulls back the one we've selected as packets, and it's number two. Now, it is number 3 on the list, but if we have a look at the database, packets is actually having has an index of number 2, so it's pulling back the right value. If we pick tins and hit the button, we get number 1. And in the database, tins is indeed number 1. Now, the other thing we can try out is we can try using the pre-selection so that when we make that call, we'll put tins in. So what it should do is it should populate the combo from the database and pre-select a one called tins. We try running that now. Tins has been pre-selected and it is indeed number one on the list from the database, which it is. So this gives you a very easy way of populating any combo box you like. I hope you find these routines useful. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.